Large language models, or LLMs, such as ChatGPT, have taken the world by storm. The first time that you played with generative AI, it did evoke a sense of magic. I mean, with artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon. You know, you know all those stories where there's the guy with the pentagram and the holy water, and he's like, yeah, you sure you can control the demon. Have you ever wondered how computers can create music, art, or even stories all on their own? In a world where technology seems to evolve at lightning speed, one of the most captivating advancements is the rise of generative AI. But what exactly is generative AI? How does it work? And what are the implications for our future? In this video, we will reveal everything you need to know about it. So, let's start. Generative AI doesn't just find or sort stuff, it makes new things. A big type of generative AI is called large language models, or LLMs. They can talk just like humans do. Now, let's break down how it works. Imagine a big network of numbers. That's like the brain of the AI. Just like how our brains have lots of connected cells, this network has lots of connected numbers. But unlike our brains, this network only understands numbers. You can give it numbers that represent words or images. For example, if you type kids are into chat GPT, it turns those words into numbers and then does some math with its number network to predict the next word. It's like a game of guessing the next word. And if you feed its guess back in, it keeps adding more words, like telling a never-ending story. But how does it learn to make these guesses? Well, it's not like someone writes down rules for it. Instead, it learns by looking at a ton of text from the internet. Just like how babies learn to talk by hearing people talk around them. The AI learns patterns by reading lots of text, and when it makes a wrong guess, it tweaks its number network a bit to hopefully make a better guess next time. This process is called backpropagation, which is just a fancy way of saying fixing mistakes. But even after all this training, the machine still needs a little help from humans. We have to spend a lot of time testing it and giving it feedback, like when you're teaching a dog tricks. This helps the machine understand what's right and what's wrong. That's why, even though the machine might know how to do some things, like rob a bank, we make sure it knows it shouldn't help with bad stuff. Once it's trained and ready to go, we mostly leave it alone, only making small adjustments here and there. That's what the P in GPT stands for, pre-trained. But in the future, we might have machines that can keep learning and improving all the time. Generative AI is the technology behind almost all the biggest AI tools, you know. Generative AI isn't exactly brand new. People have been playing around with it since the 1960s, mainly in making chatbots. But it took off in 2014 when a new kind of AI called GANs came along. These GANs made it possible for generative AI to make images and videos that look amazingly real. This new ability has led to some cool things, like better movie dubbing and more interactive learning materials. But it's also raised concerns about fake videos and sneaky cyber attacks. Recent improvements in generative AI, like transformers and huge language models, have made it even more powerful. These fancy tools let AI understand and create way more detailed stuff than ever before. They can even generate different kinds of media, like images or videos, from just text. So how does generative AI work? It all begins with giving the AI a prompt. This could be anything from text to images, videos, or music. Then, special algorithms inside the AI system get to work, creating new content based on that prompt. This content could be a simple sentence, essays, solutions to problems, and even images or audio clips of people. In the past, using generative AI was pretty complicated. You had to feed data into the AI using special tools and languages like Python. But now, things are getting simpler. Developers are making it easier for regular people to interact with generative AI. You can just describe what you want in plain language, and the AI will do its best to deliver. Plus, you can give feedback to customize the results to your liking, adjusting things like style and tone. Generative AI uses a mix of different algorithms to understand and process content. For example, when it's working with text, it breaks down the words and sentences into different parts, like subjects and actions. Similarly, with images, it breaks them down into different visual elements. But there's a catch you need to be aware of. Sometimes these algorithms can also pick up on biases or misinformation from the data they've been trained on. Once the AI understands what you're asking for, it uses a specific type of neural network to generate the new content. These networks come in various forms, including GANs and VAEs. 
VAEs, or variational autoencoders, are a specific type of neural network utilized by AI for content generation. Alongside other network types like GANs, or generative adversarial networks, VAEs excel at crafting items such as lifelike faces or synthetic data. And lately, there's been even more progress with something called transformers, which can handle not just language and images, but also things like protein structures. There are four popular generative AI interfaces, ChatGPT, DAL-E, Sora, and Gemini. Generative AI can do many things without people needing to do much. It helps with customer service by making chatbots that talk to people. It can also make videos called deepfakes that look like someone else. It's good for translating movies or lessons into different languages, making it easier for everyone to understand. Generative AI can write things like emails, dating profiles, and school papers. It can also make pictures and videos look very real and pretty. It can help suggest new medicines and design things like buildings or furniture. And it can even write music in different styles. But what are the limitations of generative AI? Generative AI, while impressive, comes with its own set of limitations that we must understand. Early versions of generative AI have shown us these challenges clearly. One big problem is figuring out where the content comes from. Sometimes generative AI doesn't show us the source of the information it generates. Another issue is bias. It's hard to know if the sources it uses are biased in some way. And even though the content may look real, it might still be wrong. This makes spotting mistakes tricky. Plus, it's tough to teach generative AI to adapt to new situations. And sometimes, the results it gives us can hide nasty things like prejudice and hate. One way that AI has made big strides is through transformers. These are special kinds of neural networks that use a concept called attention. Attention helps AI understand how different parts of a piece of text relate to each other. In 2017, Google introduced transformers in a groundbreaking paper called Attention is all you need. They showed that with transformers, AI could translate languages better and faster than ever before. It could even find hidden patterns in data that humans might miss. Transformers have come a long way since then. They've given us powerful language models like GPT-4, Gemini, and better techniques for teaching AI. With these advancements, the future of generative AI looks brighter than ever. Now let's check out some things generative AI can do. It can make all kinds of things like text, pictures, music, code, and even voices. For making words, you've got tools like ChatGPT, Jasper, AI Writer, and Copy AI. And if you want pictures, try Dolly, Midjourney, or Stable Diffusion. When it comes to tunes, Amper, Databots, and MuseNet have you covered. And if coding is your thing, check out CodeStarter, Codex, Copilot, and Tabnet. You can even make voices with tools like Eleven Labs, Descript, Listinar, and Podcast AI. Generative AI, like ChatGPT, has become hugely popular due to its incredible abilities. However, as more people use generative AI, we're also discovering challenges in ensuring its safe and responsible use. Despite these challenges, researchers are working hard to develop better ways to detect AI-generated content. The rise of tools like ChatGPT, Midjourney, Stable Diffusion, and Gemini has led to an explosion of training courses for all skill levels. These courses aim to help developers create AI applications and assist business users in implementing the technology across their organizations. In the future, we'll likely see improved tools for tracking the source of information which will enhance trust in AI. Generative AI is continuously improving, benefiting fields such as translation, drug discovery, anomaly detection, and content creation. While standalone tools are impressive, the real impact will come from integrating generative AI directly into existing software. For instance, grammar checkers will become more effective, design tools will provide better suggestions, and training tools will identify and share best practices across organizations more efficiently. These are just a few examples of how generative AI will revolutionize our workflows in the coming years. Predicting the full impact of generative AI is challenging. However, as we increasingly rely on these tools to automate tasks and enhance human abilities, we'll need to rethink the nature and importance of human expertise. What do you think of generative AI? Let us know in the comments section below, and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more updates.